Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're being joined by Mohamed Abdullahi, a public relations analyst, to look at the headlines on some of our national dailies. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mohamed. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. Okay, we're beginning this morning uh, with uh, the Vanguard newspaper. The Vanguard newspaper leads with uh, the story travel of fair hike. Travelers, commuters groan as fuel scarcity bites harder. Uh, the writers are, we have adopted new strategy to end shortage. That's according to Meman. It'll take a few days to eliminate queues. That's according to NNPC. Tax Ford raids filling stations in Elorin once again hoarding. And then as Lagos government once again creating gridlock on roads. So... We've seen this uh, fuel scarcity and we've seen the, uh, the, the long queues in some of our major cities. In fact, in all our, majors, uh, in all our cities, uh, we've seen that uh, the fuel is very scarce. We heard the other day that black marketers were selling in, uh, in Sokoto State for as high as 2,000 Naira and in some other places 2,500 Naira. This is where we are right now. So uh, we've also seen where the... Um, the NNPC and the marketers are, are talking from different sides of the mouth. Uh, the marketers are saying NNPC is at fault. NNPC is saying something else and all that. would like your comment on the fair hike this morning or the fuel scarcity rather this morning. It's quite unfortunate that uh, almost one year that uh, uh, the past government, I mean the government of uh, former president Muhammad Buhari commissioned this so commissioned the largest refinery in the world uh, Nigeria is experiencing fuel scarcity in all its uh, major cities uh, I can confirm that in my part of Lagos in Alimosho area uh, I think the only one or two fuel gas stations that I see selling is about 900 uh, in Kaduna uh, I know it's about 1,200. I mean, very few filling stations selling, and so on and so forth. So it's quite challenging. Uh, like you rightly said, the NNPC is saying it's a distribution problem. Uh, they've had logistics problem, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's and it's quite funny as well uh, that at this age and time, we are still really dependent upon the tankers moving from the length and breadth. I mean, moving across the length and breadth of the country if uh, uh, for instance the tanker drivers refuses to refuse to 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 move even for one week there will be serious problem across this country in terms of uh, fuel fuel so um uh, yes it's it's it is not palatable uh, it's, it's really causing a lot of chaos i mean uh, and then the very few uh, public transport you find on the on, on the road are quite quite expensive perhaps where they used to charge maybe 200 has doubled to about 400 or even 500 and so on and so forth so it's uh it's it's, it's not good at, at all the scenes are, are very rowdy all across the country so i think it's it's it's, it's important that uh, all the agencies charged particularly the nmpc uh you know find a very quick solution because as at the last time uh, i mean we are hearing it will take almost two weeks yeah. for i mean these things to clear it's it's i don't think that's a very good one at all but nigerians are really groaning uh you know with all the existent uh, challenges already this should this is is it's an additional pain uh so like i said earlier the existing uh, the agencies in charge should should do the needful and at least uh we leave Nigerians of this uh, continuous pain of uh, looking for fuel because the, the fueling is not even only for 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 you know for transportation alone. A lot of uh, businesses rely on generators, you know, uh, fuel to power their businesses and so on and so forth. So, not only transportation, even businesses are crippled, you know. And when we cripple businesses like this what we are saying is that uh, there might be you know no food on people's table perhaps in the next two weeks uh, and, and, and that's disastrous 
Okay. Uh, while, while we're grappling with the fact that there's no fuel and the queues are returning to our cities, we also have this story uh, still on the Vanguard newspaper. $10 billion required annually for 10 years to fix power sector. That is according to the federal government. So if we have to fix the power sector, we'll have to spend a hundred billion dollars uh, in the next 10 years to be able to fix this power sector. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what you think about that. What we've been having all over the years, I mean, from time immemorial is we keep having a lot of budget to say we need these trillions, that, that billion, and so on and so forth. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we really have uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so I, I don't think it's solely the issue of um, uh, budget alone, no? I mean, finance alone. There are a lot of underlying issues in the power sector, a lot, so many of them, power generation, uh, the conservation of power and even the distribution, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, I think government and its allies need to look critically into that sector because it's, 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 it's really baffling that at this age and time, Nigeria is actually grappling with less than 5,000 megawatts of electricity for 200 million people for God's sake. Mm -hmm. kind of love? You know? Uh, and it seems that it beats the logic of rational and reasonable persons that for more than 200 million people who have been unable to find solution to power generation and distribution for more than 60 years. It is, is, is really unimaginable and, 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 and laughable at the same time. You understand? i give you an example. Just one mosque, one mosque in the city of uh, Makkah, just one mosque, not even the city, the mosque alone has more than 10,000 megawatts. Mm. The mosque alone, not the city, you know? So what is stopping, I mean, it's, 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 it's not really rocket science. Uh, so I think, uh, for instance, everyone is complaining about the, 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 the current minister of power. It seems to have, I'm sorry to say, no clue concerning what that sector is. Perhaps he's an accountant, a former deputy senate a former deputy president or governor of the cbn mm. who really does not is not well grounded in the issue of power and he's been heading that sector now for how many how many months and there has been is with it in fact nigerians not my opinion now if you rate uh one of the uh the first five poor, uh poorest ministers that are in, in this regime i'm sure the minister of power will be among uh, because in, it seems even we are not even distributing or generating 5,000 megawatts, at least what we've been able to cap for so long. Because almost everywhere, there is no electricity. If you understand? People rely on fuel or even solar, which makes it, which has driven the cost of solar energy so high at the moment. So I, I think uh, uh, the government need to do the needful. Uh, if, they, if, if, if they are going fully into privatiza privatization, allowing private enterprise, private businesses to run the sector, it should, they should let Nigeria know. And if they are still uh, about handling it, they should do it effectively. This issue of just uh, banding about figures every now and then when there are challenges, come on, $100 billion in 10 years. Do you know that even the Nigerian government as a whole have not attracted uh, more than 10 to 15 billion foreign direct investment in the past 10 years? Yes. The record shows that the, the past 10 years in Nigeria, both federal and state government have not attracted more than 10 to 15 billion dollars. Mm. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big challenge, but I think it's beyond financing. That is just my little layman's knowledge of the power sector. Okay. I, I was wondering, with that kind of money, um, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't we just venture into solar energy and so many other things? Are we, are, are we even thinking about that? We're just talking about uh, power, and I, I wonder what they are going to be doing. Uh, but in the meantime, Forex deals. CBN stops four fintechs from uh, onboarding new customers. We hear that OP, uh, MoneyPoint, and two others have been asked not to take new customers anymore uh, because uh, they are also connected, according to the report, to, you know, 
the reason why our, our naira is is depreciating every time they are connected to cryptocurrency they are connected to so many things allegations that they have said so they should not take in new customers and um, some members of the public are just uh, not very worried that this is happening so i don't know what you you think about it um seriously when i saw that uh, information yesterday i was a bit worried and surprised as well uh because these fintechs have really uh created a lot of a lot of ease in terms of financing uh in the sector in the financial sector uh for you know for for the normal banks sometimes you make transfers you make payment you have to wait maybe at least some minutes hours this fintechs is like they are like you know real time and that this is why you have a lot of business even in fact even corporate businesses now are understanding their importance and being part of family uh, so many petty businesses across nigeria uh small and medium scale businesses and even individuals uh understand this uh, importance of you know their real time uh actions mm -hmm. and they are being part of uh, uh, the fintechs rather than just the normal banks like i said earlier you do some fine you do some financial uh, uh stuff and then it, it takes time it takes hours sometimes it's not even delivered and one person is at the other end complaining and so on and so forth but these fintechs have been able to to a larger extent eliminate such bottleneck in terms of uh, the financial uh, transactions and the sector you know so i am not really conversant with uh, the reasons the, the the cbn is giving yes there might be challenge but i think what the cbn should have done is really if there is any one of them because none should be above the law anyway mm. if there is any one of them found one thing in terms of uh, the allegations you mentioned maybe uh, you know terror financing uh forex manipulation and so on and so on. then they should be dealt with accordingly you know rather than a blanket uh, uh you know stop it to mm. say none of them should onboard new customers i think uh, perhaps it's not the right way to go because most of these fintechs are also uh you know they are, they are not only nigerians i know opi for instance it's uh is a blend of uh, chinese and then perhaps some nigerian investors and so on and so forth so because the world is watching we, we are going hand in uh hand in hand everywhere asking for direct investment and so on so uh, we should also be very mindful of uh, what we do to some of these investors so that uh, you know we won't send either them packing or you know uh indirectly prevent others from coming into the country but again i think the the, the cbn they have their reasons uh let's give a, a little bit of time a, a benefit of the doubt and see how it pans out yeah a lot of people are just are just looking at it and and getting worried because um uh, cbn has not done much if they have done anything to the local banks the mainstream banks uh uh, because people run the first the first reason that people uh, why people go to these people are that or is that these people do not charge you the way the regular banks charge you they charge you the regular banks for receiving money regular bank charges you for sending money regular bank charges you for ATM maintenance and other maintenances that you don't even see uh, they charge you for virtually everything and these are the banks and then you mentioned something about uh, the real-time service that these other fintechs uh, provide they don't have that in the regular banks and the cbn is not doing anything about making sure that the regular banks upgrade their infrastructure to be able to handle these transactions in real time and then to reduce all the costs that they are giving to people you send ten thousand to somebody and the person ends up collecting less than ten thousand you save ten thousand in your account and you go back months later and you find out that some charge even if it's in the savings account you find out that some charges have have gone out of that account and then instead of getting something uh, to add to your money you're losing something no matter how small it's really really painful to a lot of us uh, that that happens but that is where we are right now and i do hope that uh, 
these policies will yield something very good. I don't know how they are tied to um, to the uh, cryptocurrencies, money laundering, and all that that the regular banks are not doing. We see the humanitarian affairs ministry. What is going on there? The money didn't pass through Money Point or or OP or any of these banks that I've mentioned. They they pass through regular banks. We've seen people stealing billions of naira from Nigeria. It didn't pass through Money Point. Anyway, let me not let me not just go to to where my mind is leading me right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is this other one that is really annoying. Uh, I don't have the details, but the headline is saying federal government to Nigerians. That's on Daily Trust, by the way. Federal government to Nigerians. Accept tariff hike or total blackout. And the Senate kicks. Accept tariff, tariff hike or total blackout. That's, that is, you don't have a choice. Either you accept it or you get out of, you know, you just, you just don't have power. What do you think? But 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 that's that's a, that's that's another problem. In fact, uh, so many so many co uh, so, so many band A's uh, from what I've read on Twitter. So called uh, band A. So called. So called. Yeah, so -called band yes. A. <laughs> Do not get the twenty hours uh, of electricity as promised. You know, and they have been charged for that. Uh, so. Uh, I see a lot of people complain on on social media, for instance, about them not receiving, not getting, they are said to be in band A or band B, and then they are receiving less than perhaps five, six, seven hours of electricity daily, you know? So so what is the government doing about that? Because if you say someone is in band A, according to what was put out, they are supposed to get power for at least maybe 20 hours or even 18 or 19 hours, but they are getting electricity for less than 10. And, they are, and you know, the, the price have been hiked to reflect the fact that they are supposed to receive or get electricity for uh, 24, uh, 20 hours or even 24 hours. So it's a, it's a big challenge. You know, like, that's why I said the, 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 the electricity issue in Nigeria is not solely about finance, never. There are just so many bottlenecks uh, across uh, each uh, value chain. You understand? And until government is really, really, uh, you know, ready to uh, uh, provide uh, a way out and solutions to this bottleneck we will continue to have this kind of a challenge because what we've been having uh, in recent years in time past is that every little you know challenge they just hurry to increase or uh, the price uh, uh, that that's not solving the problem at all in fact, what I what what should have been done is that things are put in place perfectly. I bet you, if Nigerians can get 24 hours or at least even 20 hours electricity supply, people will be willing to pay whatever uh, the tariff is. Yes, willingly, mm. because we all understand the importance of electricity. But in this case, it is never the it is never the uh, the, the situation. So uh, the NERC. Uh, and uh, you know the discos hurriedly put up you know uh, the tariff hike and then they are even unable to keep to their promise of uh, power supply it's, it's really challenging i think uh, i i i back the senate or even the national assembly in this instance in fighting for the fact that the the, the tariff hike should be reversed mm. until when you know things are put in place to ensure uh, that what is promised to the consumers is a uh, delivered okay let's take a final one before we bow out on from this uh, segment edo has uh, now announced a minimum wage of seventy thousand naira this is a good one uh but we uh, there are some critics who are looking at it from the prism of the fact that uh, it's a very political it's a political move uh, the elections are around the corner Perhaps is a is a political move by the uh, by the by the governor to score a cheap point and garner support uh, for his uh, party. Uh, but again, whatsoever it is, is a good move. Uh, it's said to be starting on the first of May. I mean the workers. I mean the workers' day. So it's a good one. At least if it's sustainable, uh, it's a good one. Whatsoever the intention is, 
I'm sure the workers in Edo, uh, from 40,000 to 30,000, that's almost uh, uh, 80 plus, or 85 percent plus increase. That, that's a very good one. Uh, I, I, I doubt it if there is any other state in Nigeria, not even Lagos, uh, that pays such a minimum wage. So it's a good one. Whatsoever the motive is, uh, let the workers in Edo enjoy, and hopefully uh, it won't increase the inflation over there. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know the Lagos, so you can't compare. <laughs> <laughs> but some people also are of the opinion that um, he shouldn't have done this at the 11th hour of his administration. He's leaving that burden to the next governor who may not even know how to find a way around it. And like you said, you're hoping that it will be sustainable. Do, you th do we really think it's going to be sustainable? We'll leave that to... Uh, time and chance and see what is going to happen in a do state 70,000 NLC is asking for 300 and something or even 600,000 and a do is giving 70,000 well uh, It has to start somewhere Yeah, it's a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'd like to say thank a big thank you to you Mohammed for coming on our show this morning and, and sharing your thoughts with us Thank you very much Nigerians. Yeah mm. We've been talking with Mohammed Abdullahi, a public relations analyst on uh, Off the Press this morning. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll be taking our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs> 